This is example five from lesson R.3. These two problems we are supposed to factor by grouping. Now, normally when you have a polynomial and it has four terms in it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop parentheses around the first two and around the last two. And then we're gonna try the grouping thing this way. So we look in the first parentheses and try to find out the GCF, the greatest common factor. All right, and it looks like both of these have a C and then nothing else in common, all right? So when I take a C out of this, I have a seven and a D left over and then the minus sign. And when I take a C away from this C squared, I have another C left over, okay? In the second parentheses, I'm looking for a number that can go into both 14 and two, the biggest number, and that's gonna be a two. And I see that this has a D and this has a C, so they don't have anything else in common. So two goes into 14 seven times, and then two goes into two one time, and then there's that C over there. Okay, and now I notice that my parentheses match, so I'm gonna do the greatest common factor one more time, and this time, the greatest common factor actually is the parentheses. So the greatest common factor, 7D minus C, and then the second parentheses, well, if I do my little division trick and divide by 7D minus C, which is the parentheses, that will all cancel and leave me with just that C. And if I divide this side by the 7D minus C, that will all cancel and leave me with just that two, and then that plus sign right there is gonna come down right in the middle. So here's part A, this factors into 7D minus C, and then C plus two. Now, when we get down into B, if we try and group the first two and the last two together, we're gonna find out that we don't actually have two sets of parentheses that look alike. So another thing we can try is grouping three things together. And what I notice is that I have an M squared an mn term here, term, and then an n squared here. So I'm gonna try and group these three terms together. And I'm changing these signs here because I'm leaving that negative sign out in the front like that. Okay, if I distributed the negative into parentheses, then I would have my original problem back with all of those being negatives. Okay, so this problem, I'm not gonna do anything to the 36 just yet, but I do wanna try and factor this trinomial back here. I need to find things that'll multiply and give me nine that will also add together and give me six. And that's gonna be three and three, actually positive three and positive three. And because this had a variable on it as well, I need to be sure and put the variable back here with the three. So I have to put those n's back there because n times n will give me n squared and the m times m in the front will give me the m squared. So this problem actually looks like 36 minus m plus 3n to the second power. Now, it actually turns out that this is a difference of squares, we can actually factor this one more time because 36 is a perfect square and so is my binomial squared back here. So I know that this is gonna factor one more time and I'm gonna put the brackets in here because I don't wanna have too many parentheses to confuse me. So the square root of 36 is six and six and then the square root of m plus 3n squared is m plus 3n and m plus 3n. And then one of these should be positive and the other one should be negative. So the last thing I'm gonna do is, I don't really need these parentheses in here because that's a plus sign. So we're gonna have six plus m plus three N. And then I'm gonna distribute this negative sign into these parentheses and that's gonna turn this one into six minus M minus three N. 
And this is how part B will factor.